Cleopatra is one of the most iconic and mysterious figures in history. The last pair of Egypt, her story is shrouded in uh, myths and legends. However, there's some truly bizarre facts about her life that she might not know. Did you know she had a secret beauty, regimen, or that she actually was an uh, Egyptian? What was Cleopatra's most unusual hobby? And what role did her pet snake play in her life? Discover more with these weird facts about Cleopatra. Okay, people, best in your seatbelts, and let's dive into it. Number 12, Cleopatra was an Egyptian. Both King Tut and Cleopatra would likely come to mind if someone asked you to. Name an ancient Egyptian, these two. Historical personalities are often thought of as representing ancient Egypt, since they were gilded, eyelinered, and walked around their lavish palaces with their hands at 90 degree angles, just like the Bangles song from the 80s. The weird part is one of those two wasn't even Egyptian. Cleopatra belonged to the Ptolemaic dynasty, which was descended from Ptolemy. The first, the commander of Alexander the <coughs> Great, according to the history of Macedonia, that implies that they not only had Greek origin, but also spoken. Practice Greek culture. After telling me the first assumed control of Egypt after Alexander's, Passing in 32-3 BC, the Ptolemies governed Egypt for 300 years, therefore. How did a group of men from another continent end up in control of Egypt? Well, they took control of it as the ancient Greeks frequently did when they were bored. The good news is that the Persians, who were the conquerors, who came before the Alexandrian conquerors, had worn Egyptians down to the point that they were basically cool with their non-Egyptian monarch. Number 11, there was some creepy... Delivering stuff in Cleopatra's. Background. To preserve their royal bloodline, Osiris married Isis' his sister. Genetic problems probably didn't bother the gods. Unfortunately for the Egyptian pharaohs, who looked up to the Egyptian gods, hereditary abnormalities were a concern. For mortals, when Ptolemy took power, they thought incest sounds terrific. A few hundred years later, Cleopatra was a genetic soup of Ptolemus who married... Ptolemies and were descended from them. Ptolemy the seventh father Cleopatra. The biography speculates that her mother was either her father's sister or her uncle's cousin's mother's sister's niece. Wrap your mind around that. Cleopatra married both of her younger brothers in their huge noble family. Custom. Yeah. Number 10. Cleopatra was smarter than she was beautiful. Cleopatra was wonderfully gorgeous in a most modern and semi-modern depictions, which seems incongruous with generations of incest, but maybe it was a fluke. In February 2007, a Cleopatra coin was found confirming her plain appearance. Ancient historians didn't mention her. Beauty suggesting she wasn't Elizabeth Taylor, but it doesn't matter in 75 AD. Plutarch wrote her beauty was not so great that no one could compare with her, yet her presence was captivating her. Presence was enchanting according to ancient origins. Cleopatra was a cunning diplomat and a student of mathematics, medicine, alchemy, economics, history, geography, and pretty much every general education course he hated in college. She spoke nine languages, surpassing all. White House leaders. Franklin Roosevelt, elected in 1932, spoke French and German. Cleopatra spoke the languages of most of her neighbors, including Arabs, Jews. Parthians, Syrians, Ethiopians, Medes, and Troglodytes, she was the only member of the Ptolemaic dynasty to study Egyptian. Before her rule, Ptolemy didn't care about Egyptian culture or religion, and largely lived in Alexandria, which was like ancient Egypt's Chinatown, albeit. Greeker. The Ptolemies periodically took a trip to the Nile River just to remember they were still in Egypt, still the Greek. Language was a language of governance and commerce. Cleopatra read hieroglyphics and spoke Coptic according to ancient origins. She also dressed like an Egyptian and attended Egyptian festivals. She was such a PR pro that she was declared a patriot animal of leader in Egypt even though she wasn't a pharaoh. Unlike her predecessors understood the importance of appealing to her subjects. Cultural identity which is unusual even for modern politicians. Number eight, Cleopatra killed three of her siblings, including the two she was married to. But since incest is never enough, let's get back to it. Pharaohs ruled in pairs. In Egypt, Cleopatra governed briefly with her father, Ptolemy VII, until he died in 51 BC, according to life science in his 
Will Ptolemy VII ordered Cleopatra to marry her 11-year-old brother, which was presumably just a ceremony. Still, the two were plainly not fond of each other. The relationship ended with Ptolemy VII seeking to seize the kingdom and his sister asking Julius Caesar for a helping hand. Caesar and Cleopatra famously became lovers and tell him I-7 never liked. Caesar's decision to govern with his sister Ptolemy drowned trying to escape. Caesar during the Battle of the Nile. Cleopatra only partially killed that brother. But there's more. Cleopatra married her older brother, who died mysteriously because of the must-have-a-co-region thing. Cleopatra probably poisoned him, she then executed her sister Arsenal, who supported Ptolemy, the family strife, and declared herself Queen Cleopatra's. Qualities include fratricide, but hey, who's counting? Number 7. Cleopatra's Famous Eye Makeup was actually supposed to ward off eye infections. Cleopatra's signature eye makeup black, cold that lined the eyes, and sometimes spiraled down the face as seen in most depictions. The New York Times said that coal was produced from four lead-based components to prevent eye infections not beautify when the Nile overflowed it. Stirred up marshy fills that got into people's eyes causing discomfort. Lead-based cosmetics prevented the infections by killing the microorganisms. That caused them still lead poisoning. Probably outweighed that benefit. Most Egyptians thought coal was magic, but Cleopatra was smart either way it. Seems scary to line your eyes with lead-based metals however ancient. Egyptians also liked to take the brains out of dead bodies with an iron hook and put their intestines in jars, so lead-based diet cosmetics aren't really unusual. Number 6. Cleopatra and Mark Anthony had their own drinking club. As it turns out, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony, who became her lover after Caesar's death and the totally accidental death of her two brother. Husbands weren't so preoccupied with matters so the state that they didn't have time for fun. Just like college fraternities don't have any time for keg parties and passing out in their own vomit during midterms, Cleopatra and Anthony found it inimitable. Livers, a drinking club livers could signify life or internal organs and English. Inimitable livers was dedicated to Dionysus, the wine god by food and wine. Keg parties and vomiting and puddles were unofficially allowed Anthony and Cleopatra would get intoxicated after the club's nightly feasts and wine. Binges and fool the Alexandrians' shame. Modern politicians would never do it. Number 5. Cleopatra owned a perfume. Factory. Cleopatra liked alchemy and chemistry. She believed that Roma could persuade as much as beautify perfume power claims that Cleopatra perfumed her ship's sails before meeting Mark Anthony to ensure that he smelled her before seeing her. She also had a perfume factory, which seems like an unusual side profession for a queen. Still, if you can't buy mind control, perfumes at Macy's Perfume counter it. Might be worth it to make them yourself. The remnants of Cleopatra's perfume, factory inn in Eigen Getty on the Dead Sea, show it was also a day spa, some seating. Remains like chairs you might sit into. Get your nails done or be drenched in. Mind control smells. Cleopatra wrote her perfume formulas in Gynocarium Liberty, which may have burned in the library of Alexandria's great fire. Number four, Cleopatra once spent the modern equivalent of $20 million on a cocktail. Cleopatra bit Mark Anthony that she could spend 10 million cessors on a supper, which would be 10 to 20 million. Today, after eating a simple lunch, she asked her servants for vinegar according. To NBC, she removed one of her earrings, removed the pearl, dropped it in the vinegar, and watched it dissolve. She then drank the cup of vinegar, indicating that she would do anything to win a wager. Who knows how much Pliny the Elder was? Paid to call the pearl the largest in name, the whole of history, and extraordinarily and genuinely unique modern historians. Started the science until, until somebody tried it with vinegar and a pearl. Vinegar dissolves pearl calcium carbonate, although it would have taken more than a day to dissolve the entire pearl in a sink, your own Yahweh feasible. Number three, Cleopatra convinced Egypt that she was the reincarnation of the goddess Isis. Cleopatra declared herself as a new Isis, assuring her citizens she was the goddess's reincarnation. Mark Anthony likewise claimed to be Osiris on Earth. Remember the Isis-Osiris marriage voila. However, Cleopatra was an extremely Dedicated to Isis, she played any goddess. Before that, she sailed to her first encounter with 
Mark Anthony on a fragrant barge dressed as Venus and served by young lads, dressed as cupids and maids costumed as... Senums. Anthony loved it, but that was back then. Imagine if your Match.com matched. Arrived on a scented barge dressed as a Greek deity for your first date, you'd probably rush through your cocktail and escape out the bathroom window. Number two, Cleopatra was the last. Egyptian pharaoh. Cleopatra had wonderful goals for her. Nation except for the fratricide. According to Thought Co., most of our actions were to keep Egypt independent. After her suicide in 30 BC, Octavian took control of Egypt. It was proclaimed a colony of Rome, ending the era of the Egyptian pharaohs. Poets called her the humiliation of Egypt and the bane of Rome 200 years later, which undoubtedly suited the male-dominated Roman rulers. Try not to pity her, though Cleopatra was a successful leader for over 20 years, lived in luxury, and died on her own. Terms. Number one. How many donkeys does it take to fill an Egyptian queen's bathtub like pretty much every human being? Cleopatra had an innate desire to avoid. Getting older, unfortunately plastic. Surgeons were in short supply in the first century BC Egypt and Botox. Wouldn't be invented for another couple of millennia, but it's good to be queen because a queen can pursue ridiculously elaborate beauty regimes that aren't available to the average person, in fact. Cleopatra's favorite spot treatment was something that most modern American billionaires would have a hard time pulling off once, never mind every morning. According to legend Cleopatra's daily, vets required a tub of 700 lactating. Donkeys at first, this might sound like something the queen made up just to keep her servants busy still bathing in. Donkey milk was actually not just some crazy Cleopatrasm. Hope you enjoyed the video and please leave your thoughts in the comments. Below if you enjoyed this video be sure to like subscribe and turn on those notifications before leaving thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.